your fellow vice presidential hopefuls, Elise sure. Stefanik and J.D. Vance, have both said that they would not have certified Joe Biden's electoral college victory if they had been vice president on January 6, 2021, if they had been in Mike Pence's place. Would you have? I'm not going to answer hypothetical questions, number one, and I'm, I didn't know that I was a vice president hopeful. Thank you very much, Jake, for letting me know where I am on the, on the uh, scale. I'll simply say this, that having four more years of President Donald Trump means that we'll have low inflation, low crime, we'll have record low unemployment. We saw that happen for the first time, African-Americans seeing unemployment under 6%, Hispanics for the first time under 5%, Asians under 3%, the majority population a 50-year low, women a 70-year low. What I'm actually more interested in is not my future, the future of America. I want poor kids today growing up like I did mm -hmm. in impoverished neighborhoods in single parent households to look to America's future and say, there's a place for me at the top. You work hard, get a good education. All things are possible for every single American. That's my goal. And as long as I keep that as my primary focus, I'll do the right thing. But you, you voted to certify the, the election results in the Senate in the first Republican debate last I year. Did. You said Vice President Pence, quote, absolutely did the right thing. That's still your view, though, yes? I have not changed my view. Here's the question. You're asking a hypothetical question that you know can never happen again. That, that's the challenge. What CNN and you are focused on are the past. Americans voters are focused on the future. So what I want to make sure that I do is actually focus on the primary issues confronted by the American people. That starts with the wide open, insecure, unsafe southern border. And the next issue, according to the American people, is the economy. People living paycheck to paycheck, 65% of Americans say they don't have $1,000 in their savings account for an emergency. Mm -hmm. We're talking about poor kids in poor neighborhoods not having quality schools. In New York City, the illegal immigrants come in and take over the school, and the poor kids, oftentimes black and Hispanic kids, have to stay home from school. We have a crisis that Americans want us to deal with. I'm going to deal with their future and not the past. Now, this time around, I mean, Kamala Harris would preside over the counting of electoral votes uh, January 6, 2025. But here you have a number of Republicans who are being talked about as potential vice presidential candidates who are not committing to just carrying out what is just a normal sort of performative function of the Congress and counting electoral votes. You know, this used to be kind of a no-brainer thing that you would just do, like putting on your socks. Yeah. You count electoral votes. Yeah. Now we're going to inaugurate a president. Uh, absolutely. And, and it also goes into the bucket of things that we are attributing so much to these days, which is when we hear certain comments, we say how bone-chilling it is. How many times have we used that word in terms of things that come out of Donald Trump's mouth or Republicans' mouth? I think this is bone-chilling because he could not even say, and it's not a hypothetical. He called it a hypothetical. He says he's not going to answer a hypothetical question. It's not a hypothetical because it already happened. And if he is chosen as VP, he will be put in that position. So to me, it just shows just what a stranglehold Donald Trump has over his party. And not only that, Jim, but what is so disgusting and shameful to me is that people who in the past, like you said, would not have even thought about this and would have said, of course, that's the role of the vice president. Duh. Today, they have either undergone a brainwashing or a, a clear ripping out of their spine and they are listening to their dictator, Donald Trump. It's the only thing that they care about. And these are people who do not deserve to have any kind of power. And this is going to be one of the key messages for Democrats going into the 2024 election. Yeah, Alice, I mean, is this sort of a new litmus test here? Are you kind of a rhino now if you're not for uh, overturning elections? Uh, certainly. Look, one of the job descriptions of being vice president for Donald Trump is to do what Donald Trump wants and do what he asks, whether or not is, it is in violation of the Constitution. And if anyone learned that, it was Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, but the reality is anyone who is going to vie for that job is not going to uh, take a position that is contrary to Donald Trump. But let me just say this, as we're talking about the comments he's made about Putin, about Russia, about Ukraine, about NATO, uh, all of his legal issues, all of this concern about what he would require out of his vice president, 
Jim, uh, I'm in New Hampshire. I've been here before, during, and after the primary. And let me just tell you, in, in going around this state, I have not seen more Donald Trump signs or larger Donald Trump signs than I saw mm. today. And what that tells me is that Republican voters in states like New Hampshire and across the country are coming out uh, more for Donald Trump and larger for Donald Trump, and what not maybe in spite of all of these issues, but because of them, specifically these legal issues. So uh, as, as much as there are concerns with what he's doing, Republican voters, at least in the primary, are standing up strong and firm for him. Whether or not that's going to be an issue in the general election remains to be seen, but he is certainly not losing support among primary voters. If nothing else, uh, he, it's strengthened. Yeah. That's bone chilling right there, Jim.